Most disturbing PS2 game you've never played. Haunting Ground, 2005. The survival horror experience is mostly made up of one of two things, gory violence or a lot of anxiety and anticipation. Capcom's established thriller, Haunting Ground, falls into the later category, placing a weak young woman versus a slew of mystery threats armed with nothing but her skills and a beloved dog to keep her alive. The title is apt, as it has lots of frightening situations, and your German Shepherd is a creative and interesting partner to work with, but the experience is hampered by certain technical oddities and the artificial intelligence peculiarities which are also added to it. This game is known as Demento in Japan. What exactly happens to the central character after the end of the game? How many invasive camera shots can the female lead be exposed to before the encounter turns into less of a game and more of an encroachment? It's issues like these which offer Haunting Ground a psychological advantage, and in the end, it isn't what you see that's pretty disturbing, it's what you can just not see. It isn't completely bereft of an aesthetic impact, in fact, the reverse is true. You'll start as Fiona Belly, a borderline criminally pale lovely girl who finds herself in a dingy closet of a prison, a main uninhabited castle with nothing more than a blanket to keep her warm and no recollection of how she got there. Our protagonist was involved in a horrible vehicle accident that killed both of her parents, and she has now been taken to the castle. The few occupants of the castle, on the other hand, appear to be hell-bent on killing Fiona for a multitude of reasons, so the young woman tries to get away. During her journeys, she meets Huey, a white German shepherd with a keen intellect for a canine and an overabundance of devotion for Fiona. To earn their freedom, they'll have to find a way to overcome adversaries and a treacherous environment. The palace and its surroundings are filled with gothic elements and old world splendor, as well as odd chemical technology. There are no loading delays in between different parts of the house and you may fluidly navigate from one room to the next, level to level and area to area. It's a lot of fun to investigate, and it looks lovely. However, the inhuman members of the cast has the best movements in the video game. <laughs> the game is divided into sections, each with its own predator, who follows you around. Because you have just a few lines of defense, fast planning and cunning use of concealing areas are essential for survival. You'll have to give such men the cold shoulder, meeting toe to toe with them during a difficult fight, when you can finally take them down. Merely being in the presence of these psychos causes Fiona to worry, prompting the display to grow hazy or hazy over time, and intensifying your efforts to flee. You'll lose all control of Fiona when she dashes away from the attacker if you don't make good decisions with hiding or the usage of limited soothing objects, leaving you entirely susceptible to assaults. In Haunting Ground, presence of Huey is yet another compelling value factor. Players save him early on in the game, then he becomes your loyal companion, spotting traps, locating crucial goods, or battling crawlers. In a nutshell, Huey, like a real dog, requires time to develop a connection with you, which you can achieve by rewarding him whenever he does well and disciplining him when he doesn't. The game requires a lot of effort, but the feeling of warmth and safety that Huey provides in such a terrible environment is extremely rewarding. The word distressing comes to mind here, for haunting ground is not for the faint-hearted. Its treatment of body horror, objectification, and exhibitionism is very revolting, and it touches on topics like rape, incest, and forced impregnation as the story unfolds. Fortunately, it never goes overboard in this sense, focusing on the power of the mind rather than being overtly explicit for the shock factor. In terms of playability, Fiona is a very weak person. If she gets into touch with a hostile inhabitant, she has a feeble push, a small backstep, and a weak kick in her arsenal.
Her energy level, which allows her to sprint, battle, and retreat step, and her fear level are the only two statistics she has in the game, and neither of them has a visible meter to keep track of. If she loses stamina, she would simply slow down and become unable to step back, and if she panics, a grainy gray tint will begin to overlay the activity. She'll sprint away, ricochet off barriers, and crash on the floor if she gets too nervous. Or she'll end up flat and unable to function for an extended length of time. Because all of this renders Fiona completely vulnerable against an adversary, you'll want to keep her as far from them as possible, and the game presents you with various options for hiding from enemies. You can conceal yourself beneath beds, inside closets, within bathtubs, behind curtains, and in other locations. Early on in the game, the game warns you that even if you utilize a hiding spot frequently, the person hunting you will ultimately figure it out. Even if Fiona has a substantial sprinting lead on her adversary and chooses a hiding area she's never really used before, she'll occasionally be discovered for no apparent reason. Also, you may receive a Coast is Clear notification after being hunted, indicating that it is safe to exit from your hiding area, but this is not always the case. You'll find yourself staring your enemy in the face if you step out too quickly. As a result, there are moments when you'll find yourself sitting around waiting for the music to end so you can get back to work, and this becomes really tedious. <laughs> The delicate background noises will alter to a certain tune as another adversary approaches, or Huey will scream to notify you to that monster's imminent return, and you'll grow to depend on the player's music for hints. It may seem strange to praise the game's genuine usage of doorways, but it's all about of Haunting Ground's fantastic attractions. Its game design is entrenched in its story-driven heritage, yet it accomplishes so many small things effectively that it has a completely distinct perspective. There's even an early version of a building mechanism here that you may use to construct improvised weapons to slow down your predator. The method you utilize is quite convoluted, but there's enough room for experimenting that you'll wind up with some unique goods that will make your life simpler. In reality, it is simply based on, if you're nasty to Huey, or if you embrace him and gain his trust, you can change the game's conclusion. The game will take somewhere around 10 to 15 hours at its fullest, and you can prolong the duration of the game by playing on higher levels and acquiring new Fiona costumes and Huey's as well. The girl's bonding with her dog, as well as her complete reliance on her canine's companionship, provides Haunting Ground its own distinct spot in the horror genre. Although the hide-and-seek play has some issues, Haunting Ground is worth a look if you're a major horror lover looking for something unique. Through Haunting Ground, Capcom has created an intriguing suspense thriller. Twitch gamers and adrenaline junkies will most likely despise it, but old classic enthusiasts will love the game's leisurely pace and prizes for cunning escapades. Simply put, it's a very specialized game, but Haunting Ground's mix of high presentation, frightening sexuality, and neurological mind-jabbing makes it one of the more exciting games in the last few months for the audience it's trying to reach and the stuff it's attempting to do. However, it is not suitable for all.